Good morning, everyone. My name's Alan Cantle. And before I get started, please allow yourself to think outside the package when listening to this chiplet presentation. Excuse the pun. The title of this presentation is Redefining Computing Architecture Boundaries with Off-Package Chiplets. And this is very much an energy-centric computing perspective. So what's driving computing architecture today? First of all, it's absolutely sustainability, as we see a growing portion of the world's energy going towards uh, computing in all the data centers, etc., around the world. And that's heavily driven by, the, obviously, the power and the growing size of these systems. We need the energy efficiency to dramatically increase to actually just sustain the current power levels, or uh, but we'd really like to improve them, um, as well as finding innovative ways for energy recovery. Secondly, uh, we are need to drive down the cost, and we can do this um, with open architectures that allow a much more of a democratization of our industry, and that's what we're doing with OCP. And finally, we, we need uh, to execute on this domain-specific architecture composability so we can build compute machines and wire them together as efficiently as possible for a given application's needs. And I'm going to take a closer look at the composability aspects. So firstly, um, there's four categories I've got hi highlighted here. I've got the fixed architecture first, which obviously is not composable. This is where we integrate everything into one piece of silicon to make it as highly optimized as possible and as power efficient as possible. And the classic example of that is the mobile phone, trying to keep that power down as low as possible with a performance as high as possible. So it justifies that and the market size justifies that fixed architecture. At the opposite end of the scale, we've got the server, the classic server, which is a pluggable physical composability where everything, all of the, the um, computing components are pluggable in the server, from the com processor to the memory to NIC cards and, and accelerators in PCI card format, as well as, as well as storage. So that's what we have today. When we look at chiplets, effectively we're taking those pluggable components in the server and we're shrinking them down and putting them all onto an individual package. So this is still physically composable, but it's a much more hard, you know, an IT engineer cannot um, plug these. These have to be configured at manufacturing. So I've coined that hard physical composability. And then finally, at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got the dynamic software composability, where at runtime, the software can pull resources from different resource pools, connect them together to give you a domain-specific um, implementation, the best domain-specific specific implementation for your given application. So these are the options of composability. So let's take a closer look at the chiplets what is the motivation for chiplets? Well, fundamentally, compute is, com computing is all about compute and data. And many of our innovations over the, over the years has been all about circumventing the von Neumann, von Neumann bottleneck. And that's in the pursuit of performance as well as efficiency. So we've, when we look at the history of this, we see that Moore's law was shrinking everything, the transistors, for, for, for decades, very successfully. So much so we had so much, the volume and bottleneck became a problem and we started to suck the memory uh, on the chip in the form of cache. Then we moved on and we started to design new processors, uh, heterogeneous processors, 
where the actual implementation on the silicon was more efficient to a given algorithmic function, you know, minimizing the data movement on silicon or the need to move data on and off silicon. And now, today, we are seeing that we're moving everything closer together uh, with this chiplet approach in the form of 2D, 2.5D and 3D packaging. But that's very all very well for the on-package uh, optimizations. But what about off-package I.O.? Our system sizes relative, rarely get smaller uh, as, as we get more and more higher density packaging. We just want more performance. So the system sizes stay the same or are even arguably getting bigger. So when we leave the package, you notice that we, we, are tr we have a 20 times jump in energy consumption from when you compare a half picojoule per bit chiplet to chiplet communication power to a 10 picojoule per bit system IO power. But we do have the promise of co-packaged optics for communicating off package uh, extremely efficiently. Ultimately though, we really want the highest system performance at the lowest energy and cost. So let's take a closer look at the data on this one. If we look at the popular FIO standards that we have emerged today, you'll see above the green line is the classic uh, IO interconnect inside our server from the memory connections to the PCI and the traditional QSFB optical IO and where you can see we're in that region of 10 picojoules per bit. If we look below the line, we can see these emerging chiplet I.O. standards, and we can see that they're in the region of half a picojoule per bit um, and, and trying to go lower. But in that green area, you can see that the silicon photonics um, is giving us um, a, 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 a a transition, a, a massive reduction in energy over many hundreds of meters. So we can see the, the why, why silicon photonics is very popular. But there's also this OIF, um, very short reach standard, which actually can connect up to 160 millimeters at just one and a half picojoules per bit. And this one is what I believe has got the potential to be our off-package chiplet buy for the industry to standardize around. So let's just take a, a look at an example to emphasize the energy challenge. So on and off-package memory configurations I'm going to look at here. Um, this is first implementation is just a traditional local server configuration with DDR5 memory. Um, uh, three terabytes in this case, and um, connected over an Ethernet copper, uh, passive copper network. And we're going to just look at the data, the power, the I/O power data for different memory capacities, as shown in this 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 table header. Um, we're looking at the power consumption for the I/O for a given uh, bandwidth of that memory I/O. So in this traditional server example, we can see that the local memory, we've got up to three terabytes, and it's about 50 watts for the I.O. power consumption for that given bandwidth. And when we reach across to another server's memory using RDMA, we can see there's quite a significant jump of almost 10x quite near, um, uh, to, to 400 watts. Um, for, for reaching that distant memory on another server node. So this is our reference example. And then if we look at CXL, shared memory configuration, where the industry is currently trending, we can see that we're pulling memory onto the package in the form of HBM, as one example. And uh, we're going to access much deeper memory in the memory pool itself. So the HBM is limited to about 80 gigabytes today. And we can see the tremendous benefits of half the power consumption 
four or five, with 5x the, the, the memory bandwidth. So the, the HBM makes a tremendous amount of sense power-wise, as this example showed. But when we want to access just the three terabytes of memory that we had locally on our traditional, we can see there is a, a huge 17x jump in power consumption to access that three terabytes. And, this, uh, um, and, and that's only for three and a half times the bandwidth. So the um, energy consumption is going in the wrong direction compared to our sustainability needs. But if we look at the co-packaged optics approach um, with this implementation, with CXL implementation, we can see that um, the power surely does drop, but we are still looking at nine times the power of a traditional server to access that three terabytes um, for only three and a half times the bandwidth. So the energy consumption is still going in the wrong direction quite drastically. If we decide to actually make the server have its own local memory and we also make that memory shareable over CXL, so you've like got distributed memory pools, then, and we redo the power analysis, we can see that configurations up to eight terabytes uh, will be a quarter of the electrical power, the CXL sh only shared memory electrical power, and um, they would be half the power of the optical imp implementation. Um, and when it's 16x, it's three quarters of the CXL power of the electrical implementation. So things are looking, going in the right direction here. But what if we optically enable this shareable uh, solution? When we do that, we can see that this, low, this optically CXL shareable local memory using this VSR uh, interconnect is the overall power winner as we have a graceful increase in power across this architecture. If we put all this together uh, and normalize it to watts per terabytes per second, this summary graph shows the CXL shareable local memory uh, as, as, as the overall winner uh, power-wise across all memory footprints. And equally, the silicon photonic interconnect version also shows it as, as the overall winner. So switching gears uh, briefly, just want to take a quick look at HBM and say that HBM potentially could be enabled on organic substrates with either the bunch of wires or the UCIE standard. Um, this is mainly because the actual HBM chip itself has quite a large beach front, which, is, um, which can be sustained by the lower density uh, lower bandwidth per millimeter uh, IO uh, on the beachfront. So that's a possibility. If we bring all of this together, then we have the potential for standardization across our industry, um, where the bunch of wires or UCIE could be the chiplet on unpackaged chiplet interface, whereas the OIF VSR would be the off package chiplet inter inter interface interface um, and we'd be leveraging cost-effective organic packaging and this would be this would give us a tremendous opportunity to have a unified off-package IO for all processors that would really democratize uh, the, com the compute this would also then be fully accessible to both tier two and tier three players um, rather than just the tier ones. So if we look at some implementation examples, this first picture shows a traditional motherboard, but we can see that the off-package chiplets are simply I.O. translators for the differing I.O. use cases, from you know, purely I.O. fabrics of different types to memory attach or to near-package optical I.O. But as well as that, we have an opportunity to actually come up with some novel, novel, pluggable system 3D architectures that can 
minimize the power consumption at the system level. And this is something that we're doing, the OCP, High Performance Compute Subproject. We're conceptualizing uh, these potential architectures for the future. So in summary, today's software disaggregation models are really driving energy efficiency in the wrong direction. If we can support an off-package Chiplet I.O. standard, this will have the, the potential to allow um, not only just a graceful increase in power consumption as the memory is more distant, but also an improvement in the latency as well. We'll have a more flexible and composable computing architecture and we have a, a, a really unique opportunity for I.O. unification across all heterogeneous processors from any vendor. And this will all be at a lower cost, sustainable and competitive ecosystem. Thank you very much.